Cause and Effect Paragraph development through cause and effect Cause and effect purpose The purpose of a cause and effect analysis is to look at the relationship between events. It indicates to the reader why something has taken place. Causes When we look at causes, we examine events that precede a certain outcome. For example, what caused the outbreak of World War I? Causes may be singular, where there is only one reason why something has taken place. Usually, however, there are several reasons or causes as to why something has happened. Effects When we look at effects, we look at the events that follow a certain occurrence. For example, what should we do to help AIDS victims in Africa? Effects may be singular, where there is only one thing that has occurred as a consequence of an event. Usually, however, there are several effects from a single cause. Speculative effects. Included in this are speculative what-if questions that ask the reader to consider what would be the future effects of a certain occurrence. For example, how would a cure for AIDS affect global culture? Cause and effect. Questions which deal with both cause and effect can be both complex in the relationships of events as well as the time over which the relationships are to be analysed. At a simple level we may consider why did the ball hit the floor? What happened when the ball was dropped? How long did it take for the ball to hit the floor? Such questions may be dealt with quite easily. However, consider the following question. What led up to the outbreak of World War I and what were its consequences? At a simple level, the writer may consider that World War I started because Archduke Ferdinand was assassinated. However, at a more complex level, the writer may discuss the political events that had been taking place in Europe for many years prior to the outbreak of World War I. At a simple level, when considering the consequences of World War I, the writer may say that the Allies won the war and Germany lost. However, at a more complex level, the writer may consider such things as the long-term impact on not only European, but world culture. The writer may also consider Germany's reparations to other countries and how the collapse of the German economy may have contributed to the outbreak of World War II. Immediate cause and effect. An immediate cause and effect is where the cause or effect occurs nearest to the event. For example, the nearest cause for a company's bankruptcy is the loss of a key business order. Remote cause and effect. A remote cause and effect is where the cause and effect occurs much further away in time. For example, a remote cause for the company's bankruptcy would be an increase in export tariffs and changes in exchange rates which cause the loss of a key business order. Major and minor causes. When looking at causes, you may want to divide them into major and minor causes. A major cause is one that is directly responsible for an occurrence, or it is the main reason. For example, the ball hit the floor because I dropped it. A minor cause is one that only contributes to an occurrence. For example, my mother told me to come inside the house as it was time to eat. So I dropped the ball and went inside to wash my hands. Necessary and sufficient causes. When writing about cause and effect, try to distinguish between necessary and sufficient causes. A necessary cause is one that must occur for the effect to come about. However, there may be more than one necessary cause. For example, Pollution from the factory caused people who live nearby to become sick. A sufficient cause is one that causes the effect by itself. 
A sufficient cause is only established when all other possibilities are eliminated. For example, chemical pollution from a factory was of a sort not found anywhere else in nature and so was the sole cause of illness among people who lived nearby. Oversimplification Cause and effect relationships are often very complex and there is a danger of oversimplifying relationships of events over time. The reader may decide to not only look just at obvious immediate major causes and effects, but also remote and minor ones as well. Making an inference. When we look at cause and effect relationships, you will have to make inferences. This means that you will have to look at different events and make deductions as to the strength of their relationship together. You will also have to make assumptions as there may be no direct statement that this happened because and only because of this. Therefore, you will have to be clear about the evidence that you base your inferences upon. Also, you need to be clear about the logic behind why you are proposing a cause and effect relationship. This may entail looking at other possible cause and effect and stating why you have dismissed them as possible causes or effects.